Hey everybody, it's me, Rockham Soccer, from the cast of season 12 of RuPaul's Drag Race, and welcome back to my channel. And welcome to the Shit Soup, the review show where I, alone right now, because my guest host is in the Philippines, um, review Drag Race season 12, and it's dumb. It's a dumb review. It's really, really stupid. I give my opinions, but here's the thing you should know. I went home second, so I have no, no, no qualifications as to any sort of judgment to any of these girls. The whole point of this being funny is that I'm bad at what I do. Anyways, hi guys, welcome to episode five of RuPaul's Drag Race season 12. We are slowly but surely catching up to our goal of just staying, staying up to date with everything. It has been a shit show since Cash left and every day I, I, I miss her and I think, God, she does a lot, a lot of work here. She does a lot of work here and I really do appreciate her. And I never, I never, never, never take cash for granted. Never take her for granted. But anyways, before we get into the review today, please make sure to like this video, comment down below if you have any ideas on some runways that like runway criteria that we should do and subscribe to this channel, ring the bell for notification so that you will know every time I upload this video, um, coming up some videos I'm going to have some guests in them. So I'm not going to be alone every time that we're doing this, but I have to tell you, I messaged so many people and no one just had the availability to record any of these. And that's why I waited for so long. And you know what? We're just doing it alone right now because I, I don't care because I got to get it out. And you know what? The star of the shit soup isn't, it's not the season 16 curls. It's not RuPaul. It's not cash. It's not the guest. It's me. I'm the star. Me. Stars are flop, yes. Ooh. So let's go ahead and get into the episode. So we start off episode five with Mirage going home. We see her crying on the main stage, and I cried when I left Drag Race 2. And the way that Mirage cried, it really broke my heart. And I know for a fact that when you go home on Drag Race and you cry on the stage, I know for a fact that you cry a lot longer than they show. Because when I got eliminated, I cried for like two minutes. Loud, visceral crying. But anyways, the girls are visibly shook because they really, really liked Mirage. And I'm not saying that they really didn't like Hershey, but they're crying differently. So I think they liked her more. The gravity of the competition really sets in and you're like, oh shit, we are here to win. And if we don't win, we're here to lose. So don't lose. Once the girls come back into the room, Plasma has no time to just revel in her glory and her success. Do you know why? Because Q. Plasma is just like, I won, but Q is taking my moment. That's okay, I'll have my moment later. And then Q's like, I have so many emotions for being at the top. Okay, so first off, Q has a lot of emotions for not winning. The girls who do that put themselves in Jan situations. Don't get shook because you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna keep doing that shit to you. They are going to keep doing that shit to you if you let them see it. Don't let that be your storyline. Don't let them see it. Be like, I am constantly in the top. I am doing good. I'll win the next challenge. I'll win the next one. You know what? Top five every time, you know, never been in the box. You know what I mean? Like she should have that attitude. Instead, the producers found her. They said, this girl's weak. Take her wins, give them to someone else. Tsunami says exactly what I'm thinking. She's like, I live because playing Jane is like, well, I'm not going to complain because I was safe. I mean, honestly, clock her, clock her. You, we have no reason to be crying over high placement. No reason. Um, maybe unless you're in like top five or something like that. But like here right now, there's still like 70 girls. No, no. Then we cut to the next day in the workroom and the girls are walking in and they have a mini challenge, which thank God I love mini challenges. I love this mini challenge because it really gets to see, like we really get to see their branding and what they do, um, how they can sell themselves. So the mini challenge is that they have to take a cover photo and then make a title for their memoirs. Basically it's a vehicle for us to eventually get to RuPaul saying, here's my memoir, which power to her. I'm not, I'm not mad at that. I'm not going to be like, I can't believe she's toting her own book on her own show. Also, Nymphia is doing the banana thing. And I'm just like, if I was in the workroom, I would punch the shit out of her. She's my girl to win, but I am so sick of the banana thing, which is just like, also to like Asian people, we hear banana all the time, you know, 
yellow on the outside, white on the inside. And it's just like, she should have thought of other yellow things, like a rubber duck. But the one that wins the challenge is Safira. And she, I think, okay. It's throw goat, a singer's guide to an open throat. And it's, it's about singing and she's very sexy. It's very funny. I love this. I would totally buy that book because I feel like it would double as like a throating guide and a singing guide. What if throating helped you sing better? Is that why Troy Sivan is good at singing? I don't know who that is. So from the mini challenge, Rue preps the girls for the main challenge. And this main challenge is a collaboration with her and the rest of the girls. What do I mean by that? RuPaul's going to have three songs that she's going to give the girls. We have Star Baby, we have ASMR, and then we have a third thing that I did not write. And we have three teams. We have Team Safira, who is the winner of the mini challenge. We have Team Geneva Carr, who is the winner of the lip sync last week. And we have Plasma, who is the winner of the challenge last week. That is a lot of fucking girls. There are still 12 girls here, and it's time to split them into three. The last two standing are Plain Jane and Megami. And obviously people don't want Plain Jane because she's such a cunt. Because <laughs> people are like, I don't want her to ruin the dynamic of my team. She's going to fuck everything up. And then there's Megami, who people have no faith in whatsoever. Plasma ends up picking Plain Jane because she would rather have her and Amanda fight over having Megami on the team. And honestly, that is a good move for television. So thank you, girl. You know what I would do? They would all be standing in line to get ready for stage. And then I would be like, Jane, why would you do that to Amanda? And then they, <laughs> they would start fighting. And I'd be like, I win. I win the competition. I win. And there would be blood everywhere. <laughs> so basically the challenge is that you have to write your own verse to go with RuPaul's song. I totally feel for anyone who is like not good at writing verses in general there are a couple of things i notice in the confessionals that um plasma is like uh you know what you just have to be even if you're not a singer you just have to perform and she's like thank god i'm a singer um a lot of the girls have been in girl groups let's say today because nymphia has been in a it's like a girl's generation kind of parody group and obviously she's going to be in a k-pop group because mwah, she's going to have taste you know what i'm saying she has taste but another parallel with me another one another one thank you 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 but safira is in a girl group in philly called the philly the philly willies no the philly dogs no the chili Philly willy nilly dogs. I'm hungry. I want a hot dog. I want a hot dog real bad. That was bad. It's not my fault. I didn't open up my throat. Okay, so also Nymphia is there and she is... Okay, I already know that later in the episode, Megami is like, I wrote all of Nymphia's lyrics. I had to write all of them because they were bad. And I totally get it. I wish Megami was there during my season. Maybe I wouldn't have wrote written about the fart stuff. Which I still, I still don't regret it. It hurt. It hurt to hear her say banana so many times. It's just like, is this going to be a thing? Am I going to hate it? Am I going to hate it? Am I going to go from Team Nymphia to Team Safira? Like, I mean, I'm already on Team Safira, but like, am I going to just like completely jump ship? No, I'm not. She looks fucking puss. Nah, she's, she's, she's too fucking puss. Yeah, she looks great. So for dance practice, it's really interesting because... I've never been in like the, the challenge where like the other group watches you and I would be honestly nervous, but the girls all come out. All of them come out at the same time. They get to rehearse on stage and watch the other girls at the same time, which basically means when the girls are on stage, you get to clown them from the audience. Bring your tomatoes, bring your t-shirt guns, throw your bra. Just be like, you, you fucking suck, bitch. Who said that? Nymphia. Who said that? Plain, plain Jane. She would be easy to like pin it on. Okay, Plasma has had this routine in her head since the day that she was conceived. She already knew what she was going to do. She already knew what her team is going to dance. She said three and four and five and six and seven and eight. Her moves make drag sense. It's just in the moment, depending on whether or not you can memorize choreography really quick or not. I just, 
I was kind of expecting plain Jane to like fall over Amanda and then just Amanda just to be like, oh no, now whose face is busted? They should fight. Okay. And we also get to find out that a mandatory meeting was in a production, uh, like a touring production of Kinky Boots. So she has a lot of experience. Like her performance is, she's performing down and her singing down. The only thing with Amanda is like, she has like good all-stars energy where like, the only thing that needs polish is like the padding and some of the makeup and some of the hair and all of that can be fixed with money and just like reading the comment section. All of that could be fixed from that. So she's having a, I want her on All Stars run already while she's here. Next up is Geneva Carr's group and Maya is the choreographer for them. And she is very quiet. Tap, tap, and flip, and flip, and flip, and flip, and flip. The girls are kind of like, um, making fun of her because she's so quiet and poor Megami. She has trouble with choreography, learning it right, right, right off the bat. Like I can understand choreography if I digest it a little bit, but in the moment, it is a little hard to follow, especially if the drag queen in charge is whispering. We also find out here in front of everyone that Nymphia knows how to dance and she can do choreography because she was in a K-pop group, which work. I want to see those covers. If you learn, K-pop dances and you get a valuable skill set. You understand how to perform in the moment. You understand choreography and how to think about it while you're performing and how to keep a smile on. It is a lot. So if you are going to do drag race and you've never done a girl group stuff with choreography, challenge yourself to do a K-pop choreo for one of your numbers. K-pop has some good movements that you can just kind of like pull out of your pocket just whenever you want. I'm not going to show you because every time I do it, someone on TikTok is like, that's from Rumor, Produce 48. Last, we have Safira's group and Morphine is doing their choreography. From the beginning, I knew that Morphine was pretty. I knew that she was gorgeous. I knew that she was beat down, but I have a lot more confidence in her seeing what she's been able to do this whole competition because she is more, like they were saying it in the episode, she's more than a BBL. Like she has amazing makeup. She has great dance skills. She's very sensual. She has good artistic sensibilities. She is like really good in confessional. She's like really charismatic there. I am loving what I'm seeing so far from her. And she just looks so cunty, so pussy, so good. The only thing is in this challenge, Q is shaky at the choreo and the School of Performing Arts of Manhattan is there and they are like, girl, give us the degree back because she is having a hard time with the choreography, which is like, that's at least 50% of your credits. Maybe Q's performance style isn't necessarily sexy and like very like curvy, but she's trying her best. She's doing what she's doing well at what she is given considering how nervous she is but while q is on stage nymphia is clowning her in the back and she's like what does q stand for you can't dance bitch banana banana antagonize her let her feel the pain let her know exactly how it feels to be annoying when you are in the top and you cry it is elimination day which is uh, there's there's a lot going on during elimination day. Are the the groups of girls in the workroom are they divided by girls that start with their eyebrows first and girls that start with your with their eyes first because like there is a group of girls who only start with their eyebrows first and they're all on one side and then the girls who do their eye and the crease first are on the other side. It it just looks like everyone's angry or surprised. I think it's really funny. Um, and obviously we got to have this because this is the thing in the first few episodes is that plain Jane is the antagonist of the group. I feel like her run on the show, I don't know any spoilers, but I feel like her run on the show is going to be like a Violet Tchotchke sort of thing where like she's a complete cunt and no one wants to work with her. And then later on she becomes more likable, maybe. Or it could be if Violet never got likable in her season. But Violet is a lot more fashionable. Um, but Q and Plain Jane, Q brings it up to Plain Jane. She's like, 
I feel like you were invalidating me and I, it didn't make me feel good. And um, I feel like you don't respect me. Jane's like, uh, I respect you a lot more than I respect Amanda. And then Amanda's like, why are you such a fucking cunt? What the fuck is your problem? I thought it was so cunt that Amanda just came out. She's like, why are you such a cunt? I hate you. You're stupid. Really am glad that she's is standing up for herself. It makes me like her a lot. It makes me like her a lot. Okay, so next we have the rune way. And this outfit is such a, a testament of ingenuity. Like the way it's pulled, it like looks amazing on her. And I just like the whole time I'm wondering like, how the fuck did they do this? How did, how did they do this? I, I don't understand. What is this sorcery? Uh, she looks absolutely gorgeous. Michelle is there. And I, so I get so excited every time. I see T.S. Madison there because I know T.S. Madison is going to have such great advice, such good input. I know that her and the girls are just, they're going to eat up all my time. Our first group to perform is going to be QDSM and they are performing Star Baby. And a couple notes about this group is that, well, first off, Morphine is fucking killing it. She looks so good. Her hair is moving. The choreo that she planned is amazing amazing. She looks good doing it. Her hair is flowing. As much as morphine is killing it, Q looks so awkward doing the dance. And I just, I feel so bad because like, not only is like her color coded outfit bad, I feel like she borrowed it from someone. I feel like they, she didn't have something to like color code for the girl group thing. So she borrowed that one. We also have Dawn in the group. I like her um, dedication to being an alien from space. I think that for a girl that can't sing and she just talks her lyrics mostly, it's not bad. It's It definitely is listenable. It doesn't ruin the song or anything, but it's definitely like in a safe. It's like in a safe spot. Safira killed it. She decided to do like a rap verse. She's good at singing. She's good at writing lyrics. And when she was performing, I, I can't be the only one who thought this. She was the Beyonce of the group, right? Safira is like completely eating up the stage. She's eating up everyone. The bad part is that she's here and Q is right here. So she's doing so good and Q is doing so bad. It's going to look incredibly like jarring and obvious. So she killed it. And then I think she killed Q's chances of being safe. I didn't think that Morphine could do the splits. I didn't. She can do a split. And you know what? They ended the number with a double split. I love that choreo. If you can do a split, let's do a split together. It Great choreography. Morphine, so good. I am... Every day, I love morphine even more. All right, our second set is going to be Plasma's group, and they are Lover Girls. And they do a track that is kind of like based on like self-love. All of their lines are really good. All of their lyrics are pretty amazing. Um, Plasma looks great in this like V black thing. They're all color coordinated too. They are black and pink or black and purple. Um, Amanda, performance the house down. I didn't notice her pads until they said it later but she is a great performer. She did amazing. I know that her hair got caught in her face a couple of times, but she can slay the fucking house down. I would definitely go see a show with her. I love her outfit. Plain Jane feels like she's like a little bit of an outlier in the group because like her outfit is just a little bit of a different color. I don't really remember her lyrics, but I know I like them better than Burger Finger and that's gotta count for something. One person that I really wanted to highlight in this group is Zunami because Zunami one, Zunami looks amazing. I love that top on her. She has that kind of body type where she's like skinny model Naomi Campbell, where she like, if she has something big right here, it's like a big flourish and she looks great. But I wanted to say it was much better than the song that she performed in her first episode. And two, her stage presence and energy was 300 times better than that first time that she performed this episode was definitely good for her because it showed that she wasn't just that first song that we saw her doing. Closing out the show, we have Thick and Stick, which took me a second to get because it's it's three thick girls and then Nymphia, so she's the stick. And their, their name is so fucking stupid and I love it. Their color coordination is black and yellow. I'm glad they had yellow. I'm sure Nymphia had extra yellow costumes or something. That RuPaul ASMR track is so good. And it took a while for it to grow on me, but I love it. Sometimes I'll be in the shower and be like, ASMR, you for real, real. It's a good song. First up was Maya and she, her lyrics were good and she did fucking flips. She is a great performer. Um, all of her choreography really, it worked really, really well. I love Geneva Carr's line of like, she said, 
move away or she'll run you over. And these girls are hitting the choreography and like Geneva Carr's like, bah, bah, bah. Oh, and Megami did really good. Her writing was really good for her lyrics. It really worked with the whole Megami thing. And she nails the choreography. She nails it. I'm glad that she practiced. The only thing is I hate the outfit. I just don't like the outfit. It's missing something. Like it's not bombastic. That's the only thing. I love everything else. And last up, we have Nymphia. She's in a gorgeous yellow outfit. Love it. Gorge. Um, it moves really well. She's dancing really well. Her lyrics are great, which means she did not write them. Bless you, Megami. The Asian community owes you a favor. I love Dawn in all of the confessionals. I love her in the background. She feels like a Jan character in a sense where she's like in the back, but she's making iconic stuff. I'm going to remember all the things that she does. They were surprised that Geneva Carr's group did really good. Everyone's like, oh my God, I'm a little bit nervous. And she goes, honey, I don't get nervous. I get drop dead scared. Okay, and now we are at the runway. And if you guys are new to the shit soup, we do the runway a little bit differently here. We do not do our runways based on a two or boot criteria. No, 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 no. We do them based on something else. Something diabolically stupid, something dumb, something no one else would ever want to do. Like no one else is rating these outfits like this. And that's why you're here. And if this is your first time, welcome. This is this is this is a weird show. And I'm, I'm surprised you stayed this long. Today's runways are going to be judged on if I show up to a job interview, will I get the job? Is this girl is Miss Thing? The Miss Thing with her tuck panties and she's got giant hair. Is she walking into an Arby's? Is she getting the job? Is she walking into this AMC? Are they letting her sweep the floor? Is she coming into this Fortune 500 company and getting to work for HR? We'll have to judge it based on randomly generated jobs. So our runway is pussycat, pussycat, wig, wig, wig. And the theme is just a small pussycat wig. I call these wigs bus drivers and I was going to be like, can they drive a bus in this wig? So you can tell me if you think they can drive a bus in this outfit. First up is Morphine. This is one of my favorite outfits tonight. She is in this beautiful Catwoman-esque outfit. She has a red pussycat wig and the tips are rhinestones. There's drips from the tips. Every This is impeccable. She has so much detail in everything. I love this big shape that she has. Okay, I'm on her team now. I'm on her team. She's in my top four. She is in my top four. But if she shows up for the job interview, is she going to get the job as a plumber? Okay, so I'm telling you this right off the bat. If she shows up here in this pleather outfit and red pussycat wig to this plumbing job, I don't think she's going to get it. And, and I'll tell you why I don't think she's going to get it. First off, the outfit is too big. If she has to climb through any, um, if she has to climb through any tunnels or any pipes, she is not going to be able to get out. <laughs> she's going to get stuck in there. And then all you're going to see is like the bottom of the mermaid dress with her little feet sticking out. This outfit is not saying I'm a plumber. Let me fix your poo poo toilets like that. It's not, it's not giving that. Next up we have Q. I love when girls do like warrior drag. I love it, especially when it's really tasteful like this. But she is going to be interviewing for a disc jockey. What the hell is a disc jockey? Person who introduces and plays recorded popular music, especially on a radio or at a disco. Oh, so it's a DJ. That's what DJ stands for, a disc jockey. So she shows up like this. She's getting the job. All of a sudden, she changes the track. And then it's the bardcore version of RuPaul's song. So she got the job. Good for her. So up next is Safira. It's such a fresh, stylish take on Dr. Evil. She actually looks good bald, but what I love especially is that her wig, her pussycat wig is an actual pussycat and the pussycat has a butthole in it. Can she bring a cat into this job interview for a costume designer? If she comes in here with this outfit and they see the concept head to toe, this bald bitch, they're like, girl, you don't need hair. Design my costumes, ho. Next is Dawn, and she is in a Dawn-inspired look. Like, I love the way that she chooses to style herself. I love how just, like, different and alien and kind of otherworldly her stuff is. And when she does something, she wants it to be different. Is it verbatim a pussycat wig? No, but she could definitely drive a bus in this. This is a bus driver wig. 
But then Dawn, she comes out of the spaceship. She walks up to the building, walks in through the door, and then she finds out that she is interviewing for a laborer. I feel like she walks in. They're like, have you ever worked before? And she's like, honey, I work every day, honey. Honey, I'm always working. I'm working the streets. I'm working the runway. I'm working over here, okay? And they're like, yeah, but you, have you done labor work? She goes, oh, no, 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 no. If she were a laborer, then she would get caught in the machinery. They, they already know that she's going to come to work dressed like this. And she has like a little like red scarf thing. And if that gets caught in like some sort of steamroly moment, then Dawn is dying. You know what? I changed my mind because this wig kind of looks like a hard hat. And if she sprays it with enough got to be, it's a hard hat. And then all she has to do is like take off the jacket and she'll be able to work. She has work jeans on. They would run out. They would call her back. Girl. You got the job. You are going to work on construction sites at three in the morning and cause traffic for everyone. Next up, we have Plasma. And I have to say this, this kind of feels like Angela Mon. She walks into the room and she is auditioning for a managing director. Okay, she got it. She walks in, she goes, theater degree. And then they give her the job. Um, a managing director, I have no idea what it is, but anything with like a leadership role or managing or directing, she already seems like she can do. Uh, this look is very holier than thou. I think she's getting the job. And she has three kids and she can support them. But she's one of those moms that can work and have a good relationship with her kids, which is almost impossible, but she's got it. Next up is a mandatory meeting and she is in a... Uh, robin's nest three blue egg sort of nesting look i actually think this look is really cute i think this look is very conceptual if she had done it from the back maybe it would have made more sense or maybe like if she had a collar that was like she was the one egg in the thing it would have made more sense but she first off she had a hard time getting out of the car up the stairs and into this interview room but what is she interviewing for a dietitian and so a mandatory meeting walks into this room and like there's a whole bunch of dietitians just out there and they're like what are your fundamentals of dieting and she goes honey head to toe she goes three eggs a day they're like you are what you eat and she's like i am what i eat i ate bird's nest soup and an egg i'm so i'm so proud of her she got the job she got the job next up is tsunami muse and she has kind of like a matador-esque kind of prince looking outfit um, I love the cutout on the chest and how it's rhinestone to just keep its shape. Honestly, she is the only one in this cast right now that could really pull off this look. This kind of feels like, um, this feels like Yuri on Ice. I don't know why it's Yuri on Ice, but it's kind of giving me that. She does look like she's ready for anything. So regardless of what happens, she is going to be able to get the job. I, I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Crane driver. Done. She got it. Like if she walks in and they're like, can you operate a train? And she goes, yes, they're going to say, okay, here's the crane. Don't wreck the building. Also, she's like the boss's like daughter and like nepotism. Up next, we have Plain Jane and she is in a latex fetish inspired breath play looking outfit. She has a pussycat wig on because if she's going to get cum in her hair, it's, it's going to be easy to rinse out because how much cum could could stay on a pussycat wig. If you know how much cum can stay on a pussycat wig, put it in the comments down below. But anyways, she is in this outfit. This feels like Psycho Mantis from Metal Gear Solid. It's very sexy in a very perverted way. And I like it, but is she gonna get the job? What is she, what is she trying to get? What is she doing? An herbalist? I feel like if she walked into an interview as an herbalist and she goes, oh, is ketamine an herb? Is meth an herb? Is crack cocaine an herb? I don't think she's getting the job. But if she interviewed as like someone who is like a professional fart smeller, she would get the job. Geneva Carr is next and she actually chose a flapper route, which I thought more girls were gonna go for because flapper hair is very like pussycat wig. But she walks up, she walks up the stairs, she walks up two flights of stairs because the elevator is broken. She is sweating a little bit. It's fine, she's got a fan. She could just brush herself off. She walks into a job interview and she finds out that it's for a, st a stockbroker. Okay. So she walks in, she goes, honey, if your stock ain't broke, 
then there's no need to fix it. I don't know what a stockbroker is. She looks like she's great with stocks or whoever she hires is great with stocks. If they don't hire her as a stockbroker, they'll hire her as a broker for stock brokers. And I don't know what that means. Stockbroker back mountain. Stockbroker back mountain. Naya, stockbroker back mountain. Stockbroker. Michael Roker back mountain. <laughs> What? Maya Amon Page is next up to the Pussycat game. Her Pussycat wig feels like more of a bus driver wig. I don't know. What's the difference between a Pussycat wig and a bus driver wig? Very simple. It's just a pointed outfit with pointy tits and a skirt and black shoes. And there's nothing really too exciting about it besides the fact that it's pointy. Will she be able to become a antique dealer? No, there's no way that she's going to walk in there and then she's going to be like, can I be an antique dealer with her pointy ass shoulders? <laughs> she's going to walk over to the shelf and then just porcelain doll, porcelain doll, Fabergé egg on the floor, grandma's ashes, the original, what is it called? Declaration of Independence. How did I not know that? Abraham Lincoln's glass eye on the floor. Did he have one? We'll, we'll never know now because it's gone. It's on the floor because of her pointy shoulders. There's no way she's getting this job. I'm sorry. Next up is Megami and she is in a pixie outfit for her pixie cut. And the outfit is very sheer. She wants to show off her tattoos um, and her wigs are very small. I think that it's styled not good. And the gloves end in a weird place for her. It, it needs something. It needs something big, bombastic. It needs, I don't like this. I love the colors. Can she say this by getting a job and is contributing to society? Well, we'll see because she's going to try to become a domestic cleaner. If she walks in and she told me she was a cleaning lady, I would believe it. Oh, you brought your own gloves? You got the job. The first thing I want you to do is clean the, my shit off my walls. What? I just want Megami to wipe off my poo from the walls. You got the job, kid. Nymphia. Oh, she looks so good. Oh, Nymphia looks so good. Oh, Nymphia looks good. Oh, Asian people be proud today, mom. It's Nymphia, obviously. This look is so good. She comes out first and she has reveals and she's not prompted to do reveals, but she chooses to do them anyway, which I appreciate. If she comes in for the interview, I already know she's going to go above and beyond. That being said, she comes out in this beautiful red outfit. She, it's very Asian inspired. She has like the rounded, um, the rounded hat. She takes that off. She has a wig. She takes off that wig and it is the pussycat wig. And it is a gorgeous red laid wig and it's so good and you're like how could this get any better she takes that off and then she has a bald cap with a vagina in the back for a pussy wig is she gonna get this job though she walks in and she's like where am i because she walks into a boat because she's trying to be a fisherman slash woman first off for some reason this outfit is giving fisherman not like a fisherman on like deadliest catch but like a a fisherman on like a small combo if she ever falls in the water she has a swimming cap already on. She got the job. She's she's going to be a fisherman. She looks like she, she can be a fisherman. And that was our runway. I hope you guys like that. Remember, let me know if they can drive a bus. After we're done with the runway, we find out that Geneva Cars team wins. And good for them. They were the underdogs this story. Megami worked so, so, so hard this episode. I'm very proud of her. Her lyrics were great. Her dancing was good. She really helped Nymphia out. Again, the Asian community owes you 10 fishes. 10 fishes. Um, but they won, so they all get to leave, and everyone else is up for elimination. It's time. The first time we ask who should go home and why. And I have tallies. So I had four people voting for Q four people voting for Amanda, and then one person voting for Tsunami. I think Q definitely deserves to be in the bottom because she was the worst dancer for sure. Amanda, they are really picking her apart for the details in her look, in her hair, in her padding. And I get it. If, if it's those details that really distract you on Drag Race, then eventually it's going to come to bite you in the butt. Eventually, if, you're, if you have the storyline where you're not as polished coming into the show, then they're going to have that storyline where it's like, well, they 
the details finally caught up with her. Anyways, we are at the lip sync right now. If you want to see my live reaction, please make sure to become a patron on Patreon because you get perks like seeing me react live to the lip sync. So we get into the lip sync and we have Q versus Amanda, which is crazy because Q has been a front runner for a while now. So if she's in the bottom and she goes home, it's going to shake everything up. But uh, I mean, spoiler, they don't send her home, but it's her versus a mandatory meeting. They are doing Iconopops Emergency, which is the one that goes <laughs> um, I do think that Amanda was a little bit more entertaining to watch, but um, ultimately they were both serviceable for the song. I feel like the song has a lot more weird parts where you can be extra weird. And I just, I, I didn't see the campiness. I didn't see the oogly googly spooky dookie, um, ding dang dookie. After the lip sync, Amanda leaves. And I have to say, I have grown a pretty big attachment to Amanda watching the show so far. She is the pinnacle of endearing people with bad makeup. No, but she's like, she's so endearing considering how long she's been doing drag. And like, she is a, like, she's so fun. She's gonna go so many places. If she gets back on All Stars, it's going to be a killer. She's going to kill it because anyone can get their makeup to be better. Not too many people can get their charisma to be better. And she has it and she is fun to watch and she is a great entertainer. So if she comes back, she is going to slay the house down. So that was our episode five review of the Shit Soup. Did you guys like it? If you like this video anytime, please make sure to like it, ring the bell for notification and subscribe to this channel if you want to be notified whenever we upload. Comment down below, could the girls drive a bus or do you have any suggestions on things that we should do for our runways? Thank you to all of our amazing patrons on Patreon for helping fund this video. You guys are amazing. I love you. Um, you guys really make sure that everything here just happens. So I cannot say how great, how grateful I am. And for those of you guys watching till the end, thank you guys for always being so patient with these reviews. We are trying our best to get them out. Um, leave a comment if you guys have any notes for editing and whether or not they're nice or not nice, I will still read them and listen to them because I do value feedback. You know, I mean, even if you're not nice in the comments, I still love you and I thank you that you're here and you're watching the video. So thank you. And with that, I guess I'm going to say talk to you later. Bye.